Good evening. We begin tonight, keeping them honest, with a tale of two White Houses. One where the threat Russia poses to American elections is real, and one where the opposite seems true. The question is, and given all we've seen and heard over the last year and a half, it's a valid one to ask, which White House does President Trump inhabit? Today's press briefing was a show of force by top members of the president's own counterintelligence and national security team, and they did not mince words. The intelligence community continues to be concerned about the threats of upcoming U.S. elections, both the midterms and the presidential elections of 2020. In regards to Russian involvement in the midterm elections, we continue to see a pervasive messaging, messaging campaign by Russia to try to weaken and divide the United States. Well, that was Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates. The Director of Homeland Security, uh, uh, Kirsten uh, Nielsen, was equally blunt. Our democracy itself is in the crosshairs. Free and fair elections are the cornerstone of our democracy, and it has become clear that they are the target of our adversaries who seek, as the DNI just said, to sow discord and undermine our way of life. I fully share the intelligence community and the ODNI's assessments, past efforts, uh, past efforts and those uh, today to interfere with our election and of the current threat. Democracy in the crosshair, Secretary Nielsen said, and here's the FBI Director Chris Wray, the one President Trump himself appointed. This is a threat we need to take extremely seriously and to tackle and respond to with fierce determination and focus. So that sounds very clear. In fact, more than clear, Trump appointees in the briefing room of the White House with the president's blessing, speaking out in no uncertain terms about the ongoing threat from Russia to American democracy. And there's absolutely nothing they said today that diverges much from the consensus view of experts in and out of government that Russia remains a threat. What makes it so interesting, however, is the gulf between what these top advisors and cabinet members are willing to say and what their boss has been willing to say. Is Russia still targeting the U.S. That's the president shortly after the Helsinki summit. The White House later claimed the president didn't mean no, they aren't targeting the U.S. still. He meant no as in no, I don't want to take any more questions. The reporter who asked the questions said the president was looking right at her, answering no twice to her questions. The cleanup was also required after the Helsinki summit press conference. The president later claiming he meant to say wouldn't instead of would. Though even in that cleanup effort, the president said it could also be others besides Russia meddling. And since then, the president has gone back to calling the Russia story a hoax and the Russia investigation rigged. Today, the distance between the president's reluctance to call out Russia and his national security team's willingness to was noticeable. It was striking enough to prompt this question and a really fascinating answer I want you to hear from DNI Coates. In the run-up to the Helsinki summit, U.S. officials, uh, ambassador, ambassadors to NATO, ambassadors to Russia, said that the president would raise the issue of a malign activity with President Putin. But he didn't discuss that, at least at the press conference. You're saying today that the president has directed you to make the issue of election meddling a priority. How do you explain the disconnect between what you are saying, his advisors, and what the president has said about this issue? I'm not in a position to either understand fully or uh, talk about what happened at Helsinki. I'll turn it over to the National Security Director here uh, to, to address that question. I just want to emphasize what you just heard. The Director of National Intelligence, when asked about President Trump's behavior in Helsinki, said, quote, I'm not in a position to either understand fully or talk about what happened in Helsinki. It's a pretty stunning statement. Either Dan Coates cannot talk about what he knows or he truly does not have the full picture about what was discussed behind closed doors, which echoes something that he said publicly days ago. After he made that statement, Mr. Coates turned things over to John Bolton, who repeated what Vladimir Putin said at the Helsinki press conference, that election meddling was the first issue President Trump raised with him. Keep it honest, though, we only have Vladimir Putin's word for that. John Bolton didn't say that the president told him everything he said behind closed doors. He's just saying what Vladimir Putin said publicly. So it's not even clear if John Bolton knows everything that was discussed by the president and Vladimir Putin. It's not clear anyone does except perhaps Vladimir Putin. As for the president, he spoke out at a rally tonight again, talking about how tough he's been on Russia, but also again saying things like this. Now we're being hindered by the Russian hoax. It's a hoax. I'll tell you what, Russia's very unhappy that Trump won, that I can tell you. Well, that's not what Vladimir Putin said at the press conference. He said he wanted Mr. Trump to win. 
More now on all this from CNN's Jim Acosta at the White House. Jim, do you have any understanding as to why the press briefing on this topic happened now? Well, Anderson, we were told earlier in the day that uh, the president directed those officials to come out into the briefing room and say all of those things, uh, how they're on the case when it comes to Russian meddling interference uh, in U.S. elections. But Anderson, as you noted there a few moments ago, the president had a golden opportunity uh, to drive that po point home at this rally in Pennsylvania uh, earlier this evening, and he just didn't do it. Uh, as you said, he defended his summit with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki uh, and said that uh, Vladimir Putin... Uh, and the Russians are unhappy that he's the president of the United States when Vladimir Putin admitted to reporters there at the summit uh, that he wanted Donald Trump to win. And so uh, there is this huge disconnect. We all could uh, feel it in the in the briefing room earlier today. And that is why you saw so many reporters asking that question. Yes, it was, I'm sure, uh, very assuring to a lot of Americans out there to hear the director of national intelligence, the FBI director, the Homeland Security secretary to say they're on the case. But looming over everything in the room, Anderson, is the fact that the president has said all sorts of things to diminish uh, the Russian threat in the past. Remember, it was just last month when he said it, it could be other countries, not just Russia. Uh, that is just so opposite of what uh, we heard from his top officials at that briefing today. And it was just yesterday from the same podium that Sarah Sanders called the Mueller investigation into Russian meddling a hoax, wasn't it? That's right. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, she echoed what the president was saying. The president uh, tweeted uh, this attack at uh, the FBI, went after uh, former officials in the FBI, including uh, Jim Comey, uh, sort of once again going after the institution of the FBI. Uh, Sarah Sanders repeated that during the briefing yesterday. And it was interesting to note that one of the reporters in the briefing today uh, pressed uh, the FBI director for an answer to all of that. And in the presence of Sarah Sanders in the room with him at the same time, Chris Ray said, uh, that his agents from the top on down are determined to do their jobs and carry out their duties. I thought it was a very interesting moment because it was somebody in the administration essentially saying, no, Mr. President, no, Sarah Sanders, what you're saying is not true. Is there any indication that the president is willing to embrace more fully the findings of the intelligence chiefs uh, who, you know, he's now appointed, who say that Russia is a very real threat heading into the elections this fall? Uh, there, there's no evidence of that, Anderson, and, and that was what was, I mean, it was, I think it was awfully good that you saw a lot of those officials come into the room yesterday, or excuse me, earlier today, and say uh, all of these things about how they're going to try to stop uh, Russian meddling in the, in the 2018 midterms. You know, you heard the, uh, the FBI director, you heard the Homeland Security uh, secretary all saying that there are these, all these new initiatives and task forces aimed at uh, stopping uh, cyber attacks uh, on, on our democracy. But what was missing in all of this was something from the president of the United States to have a, an anonymous official, as we heard earlier today, say, well, the president sent those, those officials out there. I, I don't think that that's going to be good enough for a lot of Americans out there, Anderson. And then when the president had this opportunity this evening uh, to, to say, you know, listen, I did this. I sent these officials out there. We're going to stop this. He just didn't do it. It was another opportunity missed.